Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Five Goats Real World Asset and Tokenization Podcast. This morning, we're going to be bringing out a different type of financial instrument. It's quite an exciting conversation. I hope everyone finds a little bit of interest in this. We're talking with Posse Tencanon from Neomondo Capital, and we're going to be discussing tokenized whiskey casks and how that is going to unlock opportunities for the retail market. So Posse, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Um, give us a quick introduction and talk about what you do and, and what you have going on. And then let's go into your uh, your offering and, and deep dive it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Brad. Uh, nice to be here. And obviously, I'm, I'm happy to be in, in your new venture as well. Um, very excited about that. I mean, I'm on the capital. So we started about a year ago. Uh, and just recently, we we kind of launched our first first product. Just a little bit of background. So I've been in the financial services now 22 years, almost 23 years, uh, fully qualified financial advisor, fully qualified risk manager, et cetera, et cetera. Been doing financial advisory, private banking, wealth management, uh, asset structuring, the whole deal kind of. And the rest of the, the founding team, uh, we have VC, PE background, uh, also startup investors, and um, startup management as well so we have a good good variety of kind of <clears throat> skill sets inside excellent all right and so let's talk about your 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 platform your offer and how this all works and let's just jump into it with the whiskey part and let's get educated a little bit on that and and start going through uh through how all this works yeah, well, if I give a little bit of background to that, because when we started thinking about the whole company and what we would bring to the market a couple of years back, we saw that there's quite a lot of unlocking of these tokenized assets in, in real estate and all, all the other asset classes as well. Uh, but in all in all, we thought that there wasn't really a standard for quality anywhere. So we wanted to kind of come in and, and set cer certain standards that when investors come to us, they know that we have kind of checked certain boxes already. Um, so basically we have kind of a four categories that we go through before we even think about issuing or investing into any asset ourselves or as a, as a company. So first, first is, is very basically that, you know, the, the underlying asset needs to have an enhanced risk return profile. And what I mean by that is that like in our current product, so we did our risk assessment, then we actually did it with the third party as well. And they came to a risk number uh, to pretty much the same that we did, uh, which kind of mirrors exactly to somewhere between European government bonds and European corporate bonds. So then you can say that, okay, in that asset class level, that risk level, you get a certain return. In this case, you'll be talking about oh, probably about five and a half percent per annum expected. And, and our first product gives over 500 basis points on top of that. So that's a pretty good enhancement on, on that level. Then second, which is kind of very simple, is that the offering needs to be very easily understandable and, and simply kind of lean structure around it. And then third, in, in all these private and alternative assets, what you want is that you want one or more kind of clearly defined exit strategies that you know that you can actually exit the positions that you have. And four, which is probably the most important for us at the end of the day, is that we are happy to put our own money into whatever we offer to our investors as well. Very strong, very strong. So mm -hmm. everyone's got this awesome financial background, a lot of due diligence, and you guys are putting out some re really good offers. Um, so talk about the the whiskey part. Let's let's unpack that and and let's yeah. get into how we make money and and what that means. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously. We concentrate on, on the Scottish whiskey. Obviously, the industry is several several hundred years old, uh, and it's been recently kind of unlocked to, to investors about 11, 12 years ago. Um, heavily regulated uh, in the UK, so all the, the distilleries, the warehouse warehouses, and the, all the stockists and brokers needs to be licensed by, by the HMRC, which is very good, obviously, from the, from the investor's point of view, that there's a, like with us, you have a double layer of regulatory framework uh, so from the investment vehicle point of view, and then also in, in the in the actual you know cask ownership when it comes to that in, in the UK. The, the offer is extremely simple. Uh, when the whiskey is in the cask, it gets better every day. Mm -hmm. And it, it rises in value. 
but it's obviously not that simple. You need to know what, what price points are you entering, what kind of vintages, etc., etc. And for us, we are kind of we are concentrating mainly on the on the kind of 12 year plus. And, and there's a good reason for that. So effectively from any production that any distillery in Scotland does, after 12 years, there's only 12% left. And after 15 years of maturation, there's only 6% left of them. And then you can imagine that after that, it just narrows down and it becomes rarer and rarer all the time. And obviously the value, you get a, you get a different yield curve to it. So it's not only that the, the liquid inside gets obviously more desirable, but also that then it gets rarer to, to get your hands on them. And so as this has, it, it, like relates to tokenization, so you're tokenizing the bottled value on the far end, or how does that work? No, so we have a securitization vehicle, which is, well, I mean, it's not an investment fund in legal terms, but it's a security. So you, so we have securities in the securitization vehicle, which have been then tokenized that the investors can access it that way. Okay. And so is this the kind of thing where you can get in and get out or are you waiting for this cask to be sold? And, and that's when you exit, is it planned like that? Or is this like liquid where you can sell these tokens or exit your position? Um, uh, well, the only way uh, before we start liquidating the underlying assets is obviously to do it in the secondary market, which unfortunately is not that developed so far, as we know. Right. But the way we the way we structure it, and obviously as it is our first product, we wanted to do it uh, as as flexible as possible. So it's a it's a six plus one, so six years plus one year possible extension in total uh, so the first year we are basically we're deploying money and then after that we have a little hold period and then from year three year four depending on the market conditions then we start uh, liquidating the underlines and we don't have any recycling so whenever we then did you know liquidate the underlying assets then we distribute back to the investors okay so how do i initially engage this opportunity through your platform and and how do i begin becoming an investor with you well, I mean, well, it is at the moment is it's going to be available for European investors uh, mm -hmm. accredited at only at the moment. Uh, gotcha. but there's an accreditation process uh, that you can go through through our website as well. So best is obviously to to come just you know contact us through our website and and then we'll we'll help you you know go through the whole process from there. Gotcha. So what kind of traction do you guys have? How much of this have you have going and, and how much of this funding and uh, deployed and how much whiskey are you guys sitting on? What kind of traction do you guys have experienced? Well, we're not, we're not unfortunately that far yet. It's, it's been only a few weeks that we, we launched the whole thing, uh, but we did a we did a big launch week a couple of weeks ago. So we are at the moment, we are onboarding our first investors. There seems to be a lot of, lot of interest. Um, and it's not only because it's, I mean, it's a cool asset. Uh, there hasn't been many people doing this before, but it's been done, you know, very successfully before as well. Um, but I mean, looking at the, the state of the world at the moment, when it comes to your traditional assets, a lot of people are looking at, you know, kind of smart ways to deploy money otherwise. Yeah, that's what's coming is that there's this unlocking a bunch of stuff. There's going to be something where people's new portfolios will have. I, I, I'm into whiskey. I'm, I'm into liquidity providing for farmers and cattle in Bolivia. There's just so much coming out there. Yeah. So it will be cool to see like how these things make money and um, and how people are uh, interacting with them. So what kind of like um, what kind of expectation is it? If uh, I'm an accredited European investor, I come to your platform, I can say, OK, you know what, I'm going to deploy some capital here and I expect, you know, a few years, several years down the line and what kind of returns and what does that roadmap look like? The anticipation. Yeah. Well, I mean, we don't deploy money to any cast where the, where the uh, expected return will be anything less than 10% per annum. And Excellent. obviously, yeah. And, and obviously we, we do have uh, through our networks. I mean, we, we've discussed about this kind of construction of the whole portfolio a lot. And there's a lot of these kind of upcoming distilleries which are not necessarily known in the big markets yet and usually you can get actually quite good returns there if and when they kind of make to the bigger stage or the other way is that they might be then acquired by your diachios or bernard regards and, and the big big players in the in the market but the, the, the base statement is that you know the the cross return should be 10 plus 
Gotcha. Yeah. So this is more like you guys have created a fund to do all this. You're not specifically like bottling or tokenizing a specific cask down to each liter or whatever. It's um, whatever it's retail smallest component that it makes. Right. Yeah. So what are the downsides? Do you like how does this work? If you can you whiskey goes bad, gets contaminated, something happens to it, you lose out. Like where, what, are, what are the downsides of being a whiskey uh, holder or investor? Well, the cask ownership is, is quite, I mean, historically, at least very steady. You never know. I mean, if the demand will go down, but every year uh, the supply can't meet the demand. So that's that's very good news for, you know, for investors, obviously. And, and the exports are, are just growing fantastically year after year, especially in Asia now in also in, in South America and to a certain extent in the United States as well. So the kind of the short term future looks looks pretty bright. What comes to the stability of it, everything is obviously in a bonded warehouse, which is under the HMRC UK laws, you know, they're under the license. If something would happen to the casks that we own, they're all insured. So the value that is the current value, we would anyway have it back. Maybe not the, the real value that we would like to, you know, receive out of that, but that happens obviously extremely rarely. Cool. And, and so for your investors, what kind of like average ticket size or commitments are you looking for? And, and what, what does your model look like? To get into like this? I said, we, we accept accredited investors, but uh, we've taken the minimum ticket quite low. So it's 10,000 euros. Okay. Okay. 10,000 euros, 10% a year. And you're holding this up to six years? Yeah, six plus one. So, I mean, we, we did the plus one is just if, if anything would happen in the market that we don't need to kind of panic sell anything and uh, kind of lose on that. But it, it obviously doesn't look like that. So right on, right on. And so do you guys, do you have any plans on like going international, opening this up to retail investors and like it just, where does this grow to? Like as far as your vision? Yeah, well, I mean, the first one we wanted to kind of, like I said earlier, relatively flexible, and it's going to be a relatively small structure as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that we can then repeat that over and over again. And, and we have we have been talking about and thinking about getting the retail side of this, you know, in as well. And then kind of our, our roadmap going ahead kind of includes that we we are going to be doing a financing round pretty soon uh, because we want to have a, our own licenses and, and kind of then expand the, the platform that then we could um, we could introduce other deals as well, which are not necessarily our own, but we have access to a lot of lot of good deals. We we get them on a weekly basis and once in a while it's it's kind of pity that we need to turn them down because we don't have a license to offer it to to a wider audience. Excellent. So this is gonna you guys have room to grow. <laughs> Ooh, absolutely no we just got started i mean we need to take one thing at a time but yeah i mean there's there's a lot of happening in the space as you know as well uh and then good deals are i'm not going to say hard to come by but you know that you would have a partner who who does that you know the heavy lifting for you uh will be good yeah definitely and so what's what do you guys have like coming up on your roadmap what's the next anticipation announcement um what should we be looking for from neomondo well, it will be mainly the, the, the things that I just mentioned. Yeah, uh, getting the license that that will be kind of the, the short term priority that then we can start curating these new assets to, to everyone. And then kind of we have a couple of other ideas to our own um, kind of new deals or assets, if you like, uh, coming up as well. But it, that's going to be a little bit longer, longer term that we just wanted to make sure that we do this first one right and we get our setup right and then get the money in and start growing from there because the yeah future looks good yeah right on that's exciting times um do you have anything else that you want to make sure that we highlight or break out uh during our session here <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, i was really ready for that um it's all right, as long as, you know, make sure that if there was something that you, if you had that you said, you know what, I want to make sure I bring this out. Um, it could it be anything, maybe nothing, but um, anything yeah, I, don't know. Know. I, I, I did have some things in mind, but I, they just don't, they're not coming from there. But I mean, well, we have kind of covered the, the main points, obviously, but. Uh, what else do you have in mind? I can throw in some questions right now and, and bring out some of these other things, these talking points. Security, um, is it held in NFTs? Are we talking about security tokens? Um, like, is there any part of that journey or, or being a holder of your investments 
Um, is it technical? Do we have, should we cover anything like that? <clears throat> well, we haven't really kind of what well, comes to our own financing round. We haven't we haven't kind of decided the actual structure yet. Um, so that's kind of be kind of hard to hard to kind of talk about. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> So it, but it sounds exciting. You guys, you guys are live. You guys have this out there. Um, I, everything I heard sounds like what you want to see when you're doing DD on a platform or project. You know, very experienced financial people involved. Uh, the asset, underlying asset, has been scrutinized, and there's a lot of positives to what you guys are putting out there. And mm -hmm. it looks like something that um, should be very interesting to a lot of people, especially the the returns and and timelines and and stuff like that. No, I mean. <laughs> To the to the comparable risk level, I mean it's it's phenomenal. You get if you if you're looking at over 500 basis points kind of risk free premium. I mean that just doesn't happen in any other asset at the moment. Uh, it's... Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you guys, you know, when you're coming out with this, um, how much of your investors already had any idea about whiskey and the value the opportunity here are you educating them and then showing them the way or do you guys have people that uh have a little familiarity here actually it's been quite a surprise you know that people are more uh, knowledgeable than we actually quite of thought uh, it is more about the tokenization when you talk about with experienced investors that they are not necessarily kind of knowledgeable about that but whiskey yeah they've kind of heard about it it's been kind of quite widely in the press, in, especially in Europe over the past couple of years. I mean, I guess to, due to the circumstances in, in kind of your major, you know, traditional markets, um, because people are looking at alternatives all the time, mm -hmm. but it's been there more than a couple of years. I mean, it's been there kind of in, in a regulated form uh, now about 12 years. Well, Posse, thank you so much for joining us. I look forward to following your journey and seeing the development of this and, and looking at, uh, you know, how your investors are making out someday and, and be part of this. And let's have you back on when, you're, when your platform has got more traction, more people out there. And let's talk about how it's going for people and, and highlight your success and, and your, your innovation. Well, thank you, Brad, for having us. And, and definitely, I would love to be, be you know, in the show again. <laughs> right on and we're gonna be sitting there and looking at the uh the whiskey market very yeah. exciting <laughs> all right Fossi, thank you so much thanks a lot talk to you soon